Through her boundless compassion for humanity, Supreme Master Ching Hai tirelessly traveled to many corners of the world to share the message of love and eternal liberation through God's gift to humankind, the Kuan Yin Method of Meditation. After 30 years of sharing her knowledge on how to live a balanced life while pursuing a spiritual path, she continues to dedicate her time and effort to uplift and enhance the life of all beings. Motivated by her unconditional love and overflowing compassion for our planet and its co-inhabitants, humans and animals alike, Supreme Master Ching Hai selflessly accepts invitations to share her insights and wisdom on the topic of global warming and climate change. Despite her busy schedule, Supreme Master Ching Hai also sets aside time to hold retreats and international gatherings with our association members to inspire and motivate, address any concerns for daily life, and answer questions on spiritual practice. We present to you Supreme Master Ching Hai's lecture entitled, The Tailor and the Two Zen Masters, at an international gathering on September 6, 2008. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Hello. What can you be? What kind of hair color you have? <laughs> Like ginger ale. <laughs> <laughs> <We> like ginger. <laughs> ginger and ginger. Okay. Anybody who did not see me? Anybody who's not here, raise hand. <laughs> you are okay, yeah? I'm sorry you don't have room. You can come over here. Yeah. How is the meditation doing? Good. Good. Meditation is doing good. And you? <laughs> yeah. The meditation do it alone, right? <laughs> and you just sleep, right? <laughs> like the car, you know, drive, drive itself. The horse goes home alone. You just sit there and okay, whatever. Hey, all the Westerner, come here. Come to the front so you don't get squeezed and squashed. I let you sit in the front because you are squeezing very well. See, and you are not used to it, okay? Also, you speak English so you can laugh a little bit. <laughs> All right, there you are. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I did in front there, old man. <laughs> with me so I look a little younger. <laughs> you go the other way, look. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, I'm just making joke into the camera already. <laughs> Come here, whoever, Westerner. Is there any Western? I let them sit in the front so you don't squeeze them to that, huh? I mean, <laughs> to heaven, huh? You know, whenever there is a space, there is a Chinese. <laughs> How of space we do, you know? So they eat rice and they eat vegetarian, they're very slim, they squeeze anywhere. <laughs> it's funny. You know, like sometimes I said, okay, come come to the front a little bit, and the Chinese will immediately come. And the Westerner, you know, very gentle. <laughs> too gentle and too elegant. You take your time? Yeah. <laughs> 
And it's, it's not like slow, but you take your time. And you walk, you know, regularly. Huh? You know, <laughs> why in a hurry, you know? <laughs> and the Chinese, they, they know it, you know? <laughs> you have to press to go to the front. Or else, you know, my God. How many billion are they now? Who knows? I give a candy. 1.3. Oh, my God. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. No? no? Never mind. At least he answer, huh? No, be fair, huh? Come on, baby. There you are. Yeah. And you say no, okay, you get one. <laughs> I'm in generous mood. Ah, I see. Uh, huh? <laughs> okay. There's some question, huh? <laughs> Oh, the mosquito loves me also. When I come here, they say, oh, this come the main character. <laughs> we, we have to visit her also. We've been visit the whole boring disciples all day long. <laughs> Let's have a change. <laughs> did anybody feed the pigeon? Yes. Yes. You did? You did in the far corner, yeah? I told you to feed the pigeon every day, huh? You did, huh? Far corner, huh? Oh, that we don't sit and they don't step on. <laughs> oh, hello, baby, you're so beautiful. I love, love. I love, love, love. You come for Dharma, yeah? <laughs> okay, <laughs> happy, happy. <laughs> oh, my God, they cannot wake tails, you know that? I live in a hotel before and I, I uh, feed them, you know? Duck or a pigeon, even rat. They wag their tails when they're happy. That's the tails of all. I just discovered why they have tails. The reason we cannot show happiness is because we don't have tails. <laughs> the dogs, you know, okay, fine, but the, the rat, so little and come wag tail in front of me. Oh, a long time just standing there, not afraid of me at all. You keep wagging tail like crazy and faster than the dogs. I thought I never see a rat wagging tail before. Fantastic, thank you so much. Because <laughs> they came in my house and they know they're not supposed to do that. So I said, hey, you're not supposed to be here. You have food outside, huh? We put food outside for you, no? And then he started wagging tail. <laughs> it's okay. I said, okay, okay, don't worry. It's mine. It's fine. It's your home. I told you already, huh? Oh, you didn't hear that yet. Not only he wagged tail, he called another one, together. And then they both come and wagged tail together. What is that? Hello, baby. Oh, sweetheart, you are good. Don't move, don't move. Nobody move. Nobody move. You want some uh, cookie? I don't think she'll be afraid. But maybe she will take it. Come, honey. Are you okay there? Come on. Now and again you have a cookie. It's all right. It's not good food, but you have food. So get a cookie. Get a cookie. Yeah. Bravo. Don't move. Nobody move. Nobody say nothing. She's afraid, you know. Look, we're so big and we eat a lot. <laughs> Maybe we don't eat you, okay? Oh, my God. No, no. Don't we have any uh, uh, bread? Oh, God. Uh, can somebody give me the bread and quickly and quietly? She's eating the cookies. Look at that. Anybody got her? You got a camera for her? Yeah, here, baby. I put it smaller. You eat, you eat. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's my fault. Come back again. It's okay. It's okay. Huh? I, close your eyes. I'm going to throw it on the table. <laughs> oh, thank you, love. I close your eyes so you don't get it. <laughs> thank you, love. Can you put it on the table quietly? Because if I throw, she might be afraid, you know? You have to put it like this. Very small, small, small. Yeah? And soft, okay? Like this, so she swallow quick, yeah? Okay, there you are, like that. Very small, okay? Because they don't pick, they, they, they eat it, swallow quick, so you have to do it like that. Just, just for this kind. Put on the table, look. They're less, less scared when they're higher, yeah. There you are, good boy. Good boy. That's for you, sweetheart. Welcome. Yeah. You're welcome, and you're beautiful, and you're very much loved. Yeah, you come down and enjoy. Okay, sorry, you should have given better bread, but we don't have... It's good enough, honey. Just let them use the... Little... Oh, good boy, a oh, good girl. Is that a boy or a girl? Girl, good girl. You're so smart. <laughs> very smart. Okay. They get used to it, sorry. Okay, love, 
Uh, yeah, that's good, good. Uh, very good. Okay, you are good. Okay, okay, that's it for now. Let him eat. <laughs> the soft part, you know, the soft part. I could you, oh, you don't move. If you sit there, you don't move. Got me? Or you sit over there. Huh? <laughs> Wow! Huh? You didn't have your dinner? They didn't give you food today? I told them to give you food outside. Well, you like to eat with us, don't you? Okay, loving, that's it. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, okay. So you might move without knowing. Oh, a little bit. Here, here. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 like that. Uh, it's a forbidden place, but never mind. Sit there, sit there. Let's go. I don't know why they leave the table there. They no need, you know. Okay, leave it. Stay there. I don't speak your language. Okay. I don't know. I can't speak your language. Can? Yeah. Good. Good girl. Good girl, yeah. Bon appetit. Good girl. Smart girl, yeah. Thank you for your trust. You're beautiful, you. You're handsome, beautiful, thank you. So sweet. Okay, today you have special program. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, you? <laughs> nice, huh? Yeah. So cute. <laughs> Okay, come, 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 quick, quick, quick. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I put it right here. At least somebody can see it from behind me. Move a little bit more, more, a little bit. A little bit. Okay, okay, that's it. And this light is supposed to be here, baby love, okay? <laughs> right. <laughs> Good, thank you so much. Wonderful. Come down. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Enjoy, baby. Enjoy. Okay? With love in there, you know, a lot of love in there. Not just the bread with love, love. Yeah, you know. You know you're welcome, right? Yeah. Oop. <laughs> Oops. He put it too near the edge. It's all gone down. <laughs> ah, take your time. Okay, now, what did we say before? Something like... Uh, squeezy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The Asian people, they're small, you know, and they're very agile. Yeah. And the uh, Westerners, they, you know, take their time. <laughs> and so they're always squeezing in front of you, and you always sit right far away, <laughs> if you have a seat at all. <laughs> Every time I call, uh, come up, you know, the Chinese always come up quick. And they always squeeze next to a Westerner. I say, why? They have some more space. Please leave her alone. <laughs> and they love you, I think. <laughs> How's the food today? How's the tray doing? Hmm? It's very Big tray? Yeah. No. Did you bring the tray, honey? That's a foldable one? Oh, that's, no, no. that's not a tray. No, no, it's a lid. It's a lid. It's a chit. <laughs> So small. Oh, but that's convenient, eh? At least something flat and big enough, yeah? You know, it doesn't matter how big the tray is. You can either put the mouth in higher or lower, you see? <laughs> if it's a... Oh, you too? <laughs> All right, enjoy. That's why I say give them food outside, you know? But I think they're still hungry, so they came. Hey, enjoy, baby. Enjoy, you good boy. Good. <laughs> what? Fighting? Oh, bad, no. Oh, you bad. <laughs> it's all my food. Ah. Come on, don't be like that. <laughs> They're just chewing, but not biting at least, huh? Now, you can get each one a big one, and then you go somewhere else and eat, huh? How about that, no? Don't like her. There you are. Now not afraid anymore. Good girl. So smart you are. There you are, yeah. Oh, enjoy, hey. Wow, I just so love so much when I see them have something to enjoy. Even not so very good food, but they have a 
When you give them food, you give them the wholemeal bread, okay? Give them wholemeal bread, yeah? So they have enough nutrition. Just right now, emergency, we just take some white bread. <laughs> but never mind. If you eat it with God's love, it's also nutritious, okay? You got that? Got it. Yeah. Now she's not afraid. You look at that, huh? <laughs> I can throw everything and don't care. Good girl there. There you are, baby. Good girl. Oh, that's all yours. So skinny. Nobody feed you, that's why. So skinny, huh? Maybe young, maybe young, huh? Are you young or skinny? Young? Good. Good baby, yeah. There's even some biscuits, huh? Okay. All right. So they get used to us so quick, huh? Okay. Ah, I want to tell you a joke that I just made. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is not in internet. You cannot find. It's new. It's brand new. Huh? Tourists used to come in, you know, knock, knock, and ask whether we have room or not, yeah? So <laughs> the doorman uh, fed up with opening door and said, no, no, we don't have room. And no, no, <laughs> we have uh, turned uh, into private now. Uh, tourists still coming. So they fed up, they put outside, private. And then still knocking at the door and ask, is it really private? <laughs> But uh, even private, you have room? <laughs> so, no room. No, no room all the time, no room. Fed up. So we put another sign saying, no vacancy. <laughs> uh, and still knock, knock at the door. You really have no vacancy? <laughs> Understand? <laughs> the Chinese laugh so late. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, people are curious. Or whatever you say, they still come back and ask you for a different thing, right? <laughs> okay, now let's get serious. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <sighs> this is Vietnamese, actually, but I translate it into English, yeah? Oh, you have translation? Your funny, ma? Huh? Is there any Vietnamese here? You Vietnam, go? Yeah, Thai Lien coi. Hiểu gì không? Hiểu hết. Okay, good. <laughs> Hiểu tiếng Anh hả? Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, good. Ah, hi đây. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your child also here? Daughter? No? In America? No. Ah, but Vietnam hả? Yeah. But you, you are English teacher. You, what for you raise your hand? You don't understand English? I beat you up. <laughs> Is your daughter here? Yeah. Is she here? No, uh, I'm go with my husband. Where's your husband? I don't see him. No, he over there. Over there for translation, okay. <laughs> I got it, okay. She's an English teacher, but he's not. He's a different teacher, right? Yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah, okay, good. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> that because I sacrificed my lunch today. <laughs> and I don't dare to eat a lot because, you know, when you get older, your metabolism slows down. You know that? Yeah. And whatever you eat, it just stays right there. <laughs> it's like you, very slow, doesn't move anymore. <laughs> and it, it should move somewhere else, I don't mind, you know, where people don't see it. But it just stays where people see it. And it's a problem. So every time I eat something, I have to, to think, you know, whether I should enjoy or not. Oh, what a life, huh? huh. I'm thinking maybe better I go breatharian, might as well. <laughs> might as well, yeah? <laughs> Today no lunch, tomorrow no dinner, and, and the next day no breakfast either. So <laughs> what for, huh? <laughs> it's okay. And food is good, huh? Yes. yes. We enjoy, yeah? Mm. Now, there is <laughs> a Zen story here. I read it to you, see if you understand. I'm sure you do. Mm. Uh, there was a, a, a Zen master, his name is Bao Nen Yong. I don't know how is that name in Chinese or English. He said something like, The iron has been tempered into a very red. And then the hammer is beating it up, yeah. And then you have the spark of fire, you know, spraying in everywhere. Ah. After a while, a sword 
had uh, materialized from that useless piece of iron and is 100% perfect. But now, when I brought it out, it's too perfect, you know? I brought it out into the gate and want to say, oh, nobody buy it. <laughs> you understand what it is? Yeah. Yeah, tell me, tell me. The smart guy. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably you go through all the uh, sort of sacrifice and suffering things and life will beat you or whatever <laughs> and uh, you end up with something useful, sharp, maybe wisdom or close to that. But end of day, no one wants you because you're too good. No, I don't understand, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, good. Yeah. You're right. Very good. <laughs> he just hit at you, huh? <laughs> to get some of your wisdom. <laughs> okay, I'm telling you, that is the thing. A sharp, beautiful, perfect sword need a good swordmanship, no? If it's not a good swordmanship, then no matter how long the sword is laying there and how beautiful it is, how perfectly tempered, no? Mm. For, forged. 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 <laughs> Correct. Good. <laughs> He's a dictionary. <laughs> How beautifully, perfectly he has been forged. It's no use, huh? Just laying there, you know? Perfectly done and very useful and sharp, ready, but nobody uses it. Similarly, wisdom or enlightenment. It needs somebody who recognizes it, yeah, who wants it, right? And who even know that it is truly like that. Like the man yesterday, hmm? like the first disciple of Taoism, of Lao Tzu, yeah. He recognized it even from a thousand miles away. He even moved toward that area so that he can get the sword. <laughs> now, these kind of men are rare, huh? We all know that, yeah. And you are rare, maybe. Wow, how many rare people are there? <laughs> it's not that rare, is it? You are cool. I, I'm very happy. You know, Lao Tzu maybe has only one or two disciples, huh? Ah. You have a lot, huh? Ah. Good, very good. Uh, you know, there are saints everywhere, actually. Yes, you are saints from America, from Australia. Australia, <laughs> uh, Vietnam, China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Thailand, wherever, yeah? Mm. Because people do not expect a, a saint like you, <laughs> so you are left alone. It's also a good thing, yeah? Otherwise you'll be canonized. Everybody who comes to your door every day expects some healing, some wonder, miracle or something. <laughs> So it's good that people also leave you alone, eh? Yeah, well, I'm so happy. Uh, did you watch the uh, the organic farming in Austria, for example? You did, huh? Oh, okay, that's just one of a saint. Yeah, but how you expect to see a saint like that, huh? Every day he hoes his <laughs> land, he plants his tomatoes, <laughs> he plucks his uh, uh, lady fingers, whatever, yeah? and he's doing his job like every other farmer in the land or everywhere else in the world. I suppose if somebody who knows nothing about us, about him or about the Tao, I bring him there and I say, look, if you want to see a saint, here. <laughs> you think he believes me? Yes or no? No. Difficult, eh? Probably not, eh? Yeah. But I know he's a saint and you know he is a saint. I see even a highly saint. Yeah, not just uh, between the second and the third border, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like in a no man land. <laughs> but a highly developed saint. So saints look like that. Hmm? Saints look like you, look like him, look like her, look like you, you, you look like them behind there. Even the one who doesn't understand English behind there. <laughs> They're also non-English saint, okay? <laughs> yes, I speak English because I'm more used to it, you know? 
since English is an international language, yeah, it's easier for everyone to understand. So I speak English. It seems easier to me than uh, Vietnamese and Chinese. I hardly see any Vietnamese around. <laughs> Mostly uh, European, Chinese people or English-speaking people. So it's fine. Uh, English is easier for everyone to translate huh? into other languages. So it's okay. You know, come to think about it, we are really privileged. Huh? You know, so many saints hanging around here like this. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I suddenly feel that I'm so lucky. So many saints hanging around, <laughs> pretending don't know anything so that I have to explain to them. <laughs> you have a big, massive, huge tank of wisdom inside you, and you sit there <laughs> waiting for Master, <laughs> the all-wise, all-knowing, <laughs> explain to you. <laughs> You're so used to being spoon-fed. Ah, that's what. But never mind. You know, since you are here, if I don't tell you something, what else we do, right? <laughs> I can also go in the meditation or sit there also like you. But then we sit all day, get fed up, right? So at least we have a break in the morning for breakfast, yeah? And then we have a break in the evening to watch TV, and then have a break when the all-wise knowing master coming down <laughs> and reading some book for you. <laughs> you have a lot of books at home, no? Or you do away with them all already? Yeah, huh? Tiring, huh? Okay, I know that. So I have to do the job that you have just said. <laughs> I asked her, what she said, boring, don't have books. I understand, I understand that. In the beginning, I was also like that, yeah? And now I read books. If I don't read books, what else I do? <laughs> and also to amuse you and make us feel happy here, yeah? Because uh, what else would we do otherwise, huh? We eat already, right? <laughs> and we sleep already on our chair. <laughs> and now it's time to have some story, huh? Yes, because you are going home soon, right? Tomorrow or something. I'm truly sorry. I really want to keep everybody, believe it. Because I love you so much. I love your presence. Yeah, I love your innocent, pure heart and your... Uh, very spontaneous happiness and your enthusiasm, you know, and your pretension like you don't know anything. <laughs> I love all this. I love especially old people because they make me feel younger. <laughs> so I tell them, sit in front of me. <laughs> yeah. The older, the better. <laughs> you know, when you put a two string, one short, one long together, then the one longer, they would feel longer, right? Yeah. Same, huh? Mm. People ask me, how do I keep young all the time? I say, I keep in the old people company. <laughs> and I say, how do you keep yourself so beautiful all the time? I say, I pick the ugly one. <laughs> you know, to accompany me. Yeah, very smart woman. <laughs> I do know something, don't I? Master knows everything. <laughs> Okay, now we go to the Zen story, yeah? So, <laughs> uh, the Zen master, he has gone through a lot of practice and sacrifice, maybe hardship, a lot of uh, discipline, huh? And then he got it, yeah? He got the enlightenment that everybody talked about. He got it, he tasted it, he knows it. And now he wants to come out and share this joy with everybody and his understanding with everybody. But <laughs> they say, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, most of people like that. But I'm glad that, that you listen. I mean, I'm glad that you you got it. <laughs> My, <laughs> you are incredible. <laughs> According to this Zen master, nobody understood him. But I got so many people who understood me. And you're not the only one. you just one group, right? Because we take turn, you see? the house is small, yeah? That's why you have to come and you have to go. And other group will come. At least you see me a couple of days. Better than nothing, no? Yeah. And then, later on, when everybody already takes turn, you hope, and then you can, <laughs> you can come back. I just wish one day, you know, like everybody can come whenever they want. 
Like no need to. Maybe we could do that. I don't know. Originally, I want like a country like you know like Taiwan for China or Vietnam. That I can talk Vietnamese to them all, you know. And then the American come and then I can just speak English, for example, like that. But it doesn't work very well. So you have a mixed salad over here, <laughs> as always. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes they don't have the time that. That we arrange, you know. Yeah. Anyway, maybe after we repair this and prepare more for winter, also we need a heater and all that. We make it all ready, and then other group can come, and then after they all come, then you can take turn again, or or maybe we see if everybody can come when they want. Uh, just uh, call if any. <laughs> Truly. Oh, this is good. This is good. And this is good. Good. This is good. Huh? It's both good. We'll do whatever. Both good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also you come when you want. Also, like they tell everybody in every center, and whoever had time and that week can come from different center. Then it's also fine. Yeah. Uh, in the future, we'll give like two weeks in advance. Good enough or four weeks better. Two days only. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Anyway. It's all right. Yes. Thank you. But otherwise, maybe you have to wait longer time, huh? Yeah. Maybe a year or something or more. Eh? No, that's fine. Okay. You see, I already squeeze it very tight. You know, originally uh, they plan only once a week. You know? Yeah. But I say once a week, then they will never see me. <laughs> you know, the house is small, but it's good like this. Like this, you can see me more, like uh, more personally, eh? Yeah, otherwise, with the binocular, <laughs> they might as well stay home watch TV. <laughs> the way Thailand retreat is, might as well stay at home. <laughs> By the time you got to the toilet, is the, <laughs> the lecture is over, <laughs> master is gone. <laughs> <laughs> or by the time you get into the elevator to come to the 15th floor, eh? <laughs> then Master has already gone back home. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but it was fun to remember, no? <laughs> I'm so sorry because we didn't expect so many people. You see, some some people come without telling us, and because I heard it, and then I just run. You know, no time to contact contact person, no time to. Report nothing. They just take the airplane, take the bus, and come. But the Thai people was so hospitable. Hey, it's very good. Yes. What love? Your best, best retreat? Oh, yes. you like that time? <laughs> See, I told you some people like that kind of hardship. <laughs> so you beat in your sword that way, huh? Uh, okay. Is it sharp now? <laughs> Good, I can see that. I can see that you have improved. Yes, a lot, a lot. I mean, your mentality improved, and your ego has been less. The less ego, the more enlightened. Yes, the more flexible the mentality, the more enlightened. The wider you can see. You see, if you are like in a laboratory, you just concentrate on that little thing in front of you, huh? Just a little germ there. Ah, oh, then you don't see anything else. Some people are like that. It's too fixed, too stubborn, you know. You like my jewelry? Don't say nothing. Yeah. Yeah. New one, new one. New jewelry, huh? Okay, good. New clothes, huh? Mm. <laughs> what a Zen master! <laughs> That's what you came for. What? Nice lipstick as well. My goodness, yeah. That's why some people told me, ah. Oh, Master Ching Hai, she's no master. She spent all the time doing makeup and wearing, <laughs> wearing beautiful clothes. I said it's not true. I don't spend all my time makeup and wearing beautiful clothes. I also spend my time eating, sleeping, or <laughs> watching TV. Oh, not fair. <laughs> they don't understand me, huh? I'm really misunderstood. <laughs> it hurts my feeling a lot. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now let's go back to our Zen stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with us. We get on well, and the story will never get anywhere. <laughs> we keep talking our nonsense about all things, but we have fun, eh? Yes. Uh, that's story this way. Uh, yeah, good story. Am I good because you keep waiting? <laughs>
Okay. There was a tailor. His name is uh, Hu Ting Yao, whatever his name is. Okay, maybe Taylor or Smith, or whatever. You know, the names came from their profession in the beginning, right? So Mr. Smith, Mrs. Taylor, yeah. Okay. Now there's a tailor. His name is Taylor. Let's let's make his name Taylor. <laughs> he went to uh, a Zen master. His name is Bao Shou. And then I come greeting him, and uh, you know, and the master invite him for tea, and all that, and all is fine. And then he asked to talk to the master, huh? because he say it's important to talk to the master. So the master let him come into his uh, room, and then they talk. And the master asked the tailor, "Are you the famous tailor?" Uh, who are very professional in your job, and you are making a lot of nice clothes for people around here. So he said, yes, yes, guilty, it's me. <laughs> he was humble. Yeah, he said, yes, Master, it's me. Okay. Actually, he said, yes, Master, it's my humble self. That's what he said. Yeah, very educated. Huh? Good, good boy, good boy. So the Bao Shou Zen master continue asking him, "Okay, could you please?" He looked humble, you know, but he wasn't that humble. That's the thing, you know. And the Zen master smelled it. <laughs> Probably they had a big conversation before that, talking back and forth, back and forth, you know. So after that, Bao Shou continue ask him, "Okay, could you tell me how we can?" Uh, you know, the fixing clothes, sewing, yeah. How one is able to sew the emptiness? Can you tell me that? <laughs> he knows the answer, why don't you say it? <laughs> if you are a Zen master and you need to ask question, what kind of Zen master are you? Okay, uh, you know already, right? They always ask you this kind, what is emptiness, right? Uh, what is the face of uh, your yesterday? Yeah. Uh, what is your name before you were born? Uh, who, you know, who are you? Uh, sometimes they don't even ask nothing. They say moo. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then you just sit there. Oh, but this guy, he is not ordinary teller. Yeah. He is full of knowledge. Supposed to. Yeah. He probably read a lot of books. You know. There is a book. If you go to Japan, yeah, I never went there to learn Zen, but I heard it from from all the people who went to Japan to study Zen. Huh? There's a book there, a Koan book, where all the answer of the Koan is already in there. <laughs> in the old time, the master asks you, and of course you have to work on that answer until you really understood it. Not as the sense of the word, because they ask nonsense anyway, you know. <laughs> but, but you concentrate to work on it until you open up yourself. You become enlightened. So in the old time, master don't just give you enlightenment by telling you how, or touching your head, or looking in your eyes, or giving you some blessed food or a tray, something like that. <laughs> ah, he make you work for it. Yeah, sometimes work for many years. And you don't even know where you're going, yeah? Uh, hard job, you know? Like chopping the wood, carrying the water, cooking, uh, cleaning up the yard, clean the temple, shining the Buddha face, whatever, yeah? You have to do it all. And hoping one day the Master will give you the key to enlightenment, but he never mentioned it. Uh, mostly not. When you go to Japan, somebody say that hey, there's a book like that. or. Maybe if you pay <laughs> the elder monk, and then you get the koan, you know, <laughs> and then you can answer your master, and then maybe get a certificate, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> become a rosi of some kind, mean master, Zen master. Uh, this is just like a quickie example. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to take some time the whole day, the whole month, or the whole year, or the whole life to work on one koan until you completely broken. <laughs> I mean, your ego completely broken down, then you understood. Not the Koan, <laughs> but you understood yourself. You know who you are, that's what. See what I mean? Yeah. So now, uh, this guy probably is one of those who already bought 
<laughs> with his money, many koans already, and wrote it down in his computer already. Uh, maybe he got some email from all the monks <laughs> and pay by credit card, whatever. <laughs> and then the, the monks probably email him back. What the answer of a certain koan? Because there are certain koans that they have been. Uh, collected since the beginning of the Zen uh, tradition. So from one master to another, and they collect it into like a big book. So they almost asking always similar question, one of those questions in the book, yeah, or in the collection anyway. So if this guy, he has bought it all, <laughs> then it would easy to know what is what, you know? Like they would ask you, uh, oh, the wind is blowing, yeah, something like that. <laughs> And then if you say something wrong, they beat you up. Uh, and not very hard normally. You know, there's a long stick. They beat you on the shoulder when you're sleeping. Mm. When you meditate and you don't meditate and your head just down a little bit and they can bang, 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 bang. Uh, that's scary because the stick is very long. You know why long? So that I can reach up to there. <laughs> and knock on the head of somebody who is not in the, his head. Yeah. The koan means a question, the unanswerable question, yeah. so that you have to concentrate all your might all day, all night. They ask you nonsense so that you cannot even figure out what the Master really means, and that's the purpose. There should not be any meaning at all, you know? And it's not uh, having any sense in the sense of the world. <laughs> It's like a mantra or something, you know, so you concentrate. The main point is your concentration. But nowadays everybody knows all the koan already. I think it won't work anymore. <laughs> they have to make another koan, yeah? Or the person has to be truly honest and not buy in all the koan in advance and go there just to show off his uh, intellectual knowledge and garbage, yeah? <laughs> so this guy, I don't know where. He got those books, uh, the Koran already, but he answered immediately. Ah! When a person answered the Zen master immediately, uh, some difficult question, you know, nonsensical question like, can you sue the cracked emptiness, or something like that? And then how would you answer, you know? There's no sense, is it? Huh? <laughs> yeah, but that's the purpose. <laughs> okay. So this guy immediately answered. I won't tell you yet what the answer is. I let you wait. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can suspend a little and you appreciate it more. <laughs> That's the art of storytelling. Keep people waiting. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm telling. This guy he answered immediately. So I doubt it. You know, there are two, two situations why the person can answer immediately. Either he has truly some wisdom. Eh? Not a lot, but some. Or he bought all the koans possible, <laughs> put in his pocket, ready already, take out like one car at a time, you know, whatever, answer A, B, C. Oh, that's uh, about emptiness. E, E. <laughs> <Take out>. Ah! <laughs> oh, check in his computer <laughs> and then got the answer so, so quick. Okay, tell me, what would he answer? If you know the book already, don't cheat. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's a book that anybody can buy anywhere, you know. It's a Vietnamese book, but uh, it's not like rare or anything, and it's translated from English or Chinese or whatever, the original, who never know anymore. Yeah. Who knows? Two candies? <laughs> make it three. Four? Yes. Actually, emptiness permeates everything. Yeah. Is oh, come on, don't give me that. <laughs> <laughs> I ask you, what would he answer, the Zen master? I don't want you to explain emptiness to me. <laughs> we know what emptiness is. What would you answer, the Zen master, in this case, when he tells you to, you know, fix the emptiness when it's broken? Yeah, what? Sue, sue back the emptiness. With empty hand? With empty hand? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> um, you take away what's there. Take away what's there? Uh. I'll say I'll try, but I don't know what they're talking about. I try, but I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Anyone else? It's fun. There's no crack in emptiness?
Okay. Who else? That's just about you, as good as you get, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no candies. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> well, you can have it later, but not like a reward. Too bad. Okay. Now, this guy is not a normal tailor, so he immediately, straightforward, answer him. Ah, uh, okay, master. If you can break up the emptiness, then I can sew it back for you. Oh. Ah, what? Oh, I could have said that, right? <laughs> I knew it, right? <laughs> yeah, the way you do it, <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, is that a good answer? Yes. You think the guy understood it? No. no. So why did he answer so good like that? Because he paid for it. He paid for it? <laughs> you probably did it before yourself. <laughs> Otherwise, how will you know? Anyone else? Why could he answer so good and so fast? As if he's a very enlightened person. Or somehow enlightened, somewhat. Yeah? Tell me. Why? Tell me, love. No? You're just scratching yourself, I thought. <laughs> anybody, anybody, my God! So much candy here. <laughs> you know, huh? He cheated. He cheated? Yes. Perhaps. He paid or he cheated, perhaps. Or he learned all this by heart already, you know, like parrot, yeah? Uh, repeating the emptiness that he doesn't understand a thing. <laughs> because he himself is an emptiness, big time. Yeah? Oh, empty inside and full of garbage. <laughs> Excuse my French. <laughs> yeah, the people who just keep stuffing themselves with empty walls, they are stuffing garbage, right? Useless, huh? Have you ever think that a doctor can read all the medical books and then <laughs> let him perform operation on you? <laughs> huh? No, years of practice, right? And dedication, yeah. Not by reading all the book and repeat it and then do operation on you. Would you dare let him? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, even the newly uh, graduated doctor, you also feel shaky, let him do your operation, right? <laughs> so there was a joke I told you before, huh? the guy who came in uh, uh, the operation room and already on the table, but in a while he'd run out, you know, and then his friend said, well, what's wrong, what's wrong? You were supposed to be on the operating table. He said, I know, I know, but I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I don't want it, I don't want it. So the friend said, oh my God, you have been operated before. There's nothing to be so scared about, you big guy. Why is it are you so scared? He said, no, because the nurse said something like, okay, don't worry, it's going to be very fast, don't worry about it. So the friend said, that is no more thing to say to a patient. Why are you afraid? He said, no, he didn't tell to me, he told to the doctor. <laughs> the nurse need to hold the doctor's hand. <laughs> he so to steady his hand. <laughs> Operation. <laughs> where, where is the heart? <laughs> Can you show it to me? <laughs> Perhaps the nurse knew better than the doctor, you know, where the main artery of the heart is, unless he cut it uh, the wrong one. Yeah, okay, that's just a joke. Mm. So he said to the master, if you can break up the emptiness, then I will sew it back for you. Oh, what a show off. <laughs> <off. laughs> so, all this humility before was all fake, yeah? Oh, like a stage uh, humility, yeah, not real. And uh, that's why he, he answered ping pong like that to the master, you know? He came there supposed to learn, right? Not supposed to show off that I know what you're talking about. <laughs> what for he came there? And just to answer the master immediately nonsense like that, yeah? The master is asking nonsense and he's answering nonsense. Uh, just to show that he knows something, that he has some knowledge, uh, wisdom, whatever that might be. He probably learned every answer at, by heart already, right? So he, he immediately answered, but that doesn't mean anything. 
it's just a showy guy. <laughs> Lucky for him, I'm not a Zen master. Uh, I'm tolerant, <laughs> patient. Okay, so guess how the master responded, how he reacted to this kind of showing off guy. Tell me. Ten, ten cookies. <laughs> I get in more all the time and you guys. Come on, what? <laughs> uh, you can have that emptiness. You can what? You can have that emptiness. You can or cannot? Can. Master says, all right. Okay. The answer is right. You can okay. Have. You can have the emptiness. That means go home. <laughs> Empty handed, right? <laughs> okay, who else? It's not too bad. You can have one cookie, but that's it. <laughs> it's not the first prize. <laughs> Anyone else? Maybe he said, if you can show me the emptiness, I will break it for you. Oh, what similar? Oh, never mind. One candy. <laughs> well, at least you try. <laughs> Everybody else are quiet or empty. <laughs> Why don't you have any answer? You're empty in there? <laughs> no answer? Who? Oh, yeah, tell me. Ask another question. <laughs> Ask another question? Yeah. Ah, no. <laughs> so the, the master tell him, ask another question? Anything else? No. You always move your hand. <laughs> he always moved his hand, and I thought he wanted to say something. <laughs> Make me nervous, man. <laughs> yes? So, uh, like, kick him out, right? <laughs> well, almost, almost. <laughs> He hit him with a stick. You know the book or what? No. No, okay. Yeah, good. But it's not complete. Okay, one candy. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Don't pretend to be humble. That's what the master responded. No, no. Yeah. He hit him with a stick or oh, what else? Okay, that's it, right? As good as it gets, right? Yeah. You Pretension is very deep, you know that? <laughs> You're not just pretending. <laughs> You're pretending real good. <laughs> you make it so real, I almost <laughs> believe that <laughs> you really don't know. <laughs> Maybe you don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. All right. So what did the Master do is also beyond me. He's uh, correct in some way, but he did more than that. He took a stick, a stick and beat him black and blue. <laughs> Not just beating like the Zen uh, tradition on the shoulder, you know, gently and to waking up a sleeping, snoring person, but he beat him here really hard. He was very mad. <laughs> the Zen master was mad, according to the book. After he said that, okay, if you can, master, if you can break up the emptiness, I will sew it back for you. After that, the Zen master got really, really mad. He got out the Zen stick and beat him all the way from head to toe, you know, black and blue, and so hurt, so painful that the tailor kneeled down on the floor and covered himself. Please, please, master, please, if you want to break up the emptiness, you do it. Why you beat me? Why you want to break me up? <laughs> So, and then the master gets even more mad. <laughs> oh, well, you think Zen master very calm and <laughs> as a collection, <laughs> very regal, huh? Why should they be, huh? <laughs> what are they pretending for, right? They just act out whatever they feel like because they're free. <laughs> so, woo to you, don't go around any Zen master too near, okay? And showing off your wisdom, huh? I don't guarantee your safety, nada. <laughs> Stay where you are, you're safer with me, okay? <laughs> the least is I just get mad and throw candy on you. Lousy people, <laughs> and you love it. Huh? <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> so this is. I'm angry. <laughs>
And you love that, huh? Oh, and some more? Ah! Uh. <laughs> okay. Now, after the, the guy, uh, you know, said, Master, why don't you beat up the emptiness? Why you beat me up? You know? So, oh, the master get even more mad. Maybe he was in a bad mood that day, huh? Maybe his breakfast wasn't as good as he expected. <laughs> Maybe he had enough with this kind of uh, showcase. He had enough already, probably the whole day. Many of these kind of tailors come in visiting him and showing him all kind of... <laughs> <laughs> All kind of there, uh, you know, great knowledge already, yeah? Yeah. Or maybe this Zen master, he was expecting too much. He was expecting to find out some good people. Or maybe somebody already introduced to the Zen master that this tailor guy, he is somebody. Yeah, probably because somebody of the tailor's level has been talking to him and the tailor always ping ping pong pong like that, <laughs> ping pong back and forth, you know, everything he like he knows everything. So the person come back and tell the Zen master, oh, this guy is something, you know, you better see him, he's worth it. <laughs> so, so when the master see this tailor, the, the worthy one, he was so disappointed, and like one of another, you know, another kind of wasting time. <laughs> It's a, just an empty teapot, you know, <laughs> all made full of tea inside, nothing else. So he gets so mad already, I guess, huh? All right. So after that, and now the master, Zen master, was uh, more mad, and he say, temporarily, I don't explain to you. I'm continue to beat you up. <laughs> 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 and if you really want to know, you have to wait until somebody some other Zen master who, who has a big mouth and he will tell you. <laughs> I mean, some Zen master would really explain it, you know what I mean? Then he say, that kind of Zen master is a big mouth. <laughs> like something you don't need to explain, but some Zen master are just too motherly, you know? They will sit down and explain to him. So he say, okay, uh, temporary, I don't explain to you, but uh, yeah, if you want to know, you wait for another big mouth Zen master, then he probably will tell you. Because some don't bother to tell you, you know, something that you're too stupid anyway. What's a waste of breath to keep explaining to you what? It's truly like that. Some people are just bugging you. No matter what you say, they're fixed in their square. They just don't see it. They don't get it. And you just say, oh, please go away. You're too good for me, something like that, you know? Truly, sometimes I am surprised at somebody like they practice long time, you know, and still very square in some point, you know, maybe open somewhat, but not completely, yeah. And it can be very frustrating to deal with such people, you know, they just don't get anything. So, uh, this poor tailor, oh, black and blue, and, oh, feeling very uh, humiliated and perplexed, don't know what to do, run out of the house yeah, of the Zen master. Long after that, he met another Zen master, uh, and he come in and asked <laughs> why the, the first Zen master beat him up so severely like that. Yeah. So this is one of the big mouth Zen master, eh? Uh, supposed to be, uh, you know, the motherly type, the one who explains everything from A to Z. Yeah, the patient, <laughs> the goody, <laughs> good one. So this uh, Zen master, his name is Chao Zhou. He say, "Do you know why you have been beaten up?" <laughs> the, <laughs> he's scared of it. <laughs> The tailor, when a Zen master asked, he, he remembered last time he was asked. <laughs> so he was so scared, he said, No, not really, sir. <laughs> I did not understand, sir. <laughs> I, up to now, I think with all my might, I wouldn't know what did I do wrong, that I deserve such a a uh, heavy beating, <laughs> like that. So, uh, Tao Zhou, you know, he, he wing at him like this. <laughs> and then he say, you know, because you are the crack in the emptiness. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Such an obstruction. <laughs> Wherever he go, he crack everything. <laughs> it's too stupid, you know? <laughs> Low level and argumentative. Go to a Zen master and show him off like that. An empty answer, you know? He did not even realize it himself. The person who answered this Koan in the beginning, the original one, had cracked the Koan, really cracked the emptiness without cracking it. Yeah, and this guy, he don't have to do anything. He cracked the whole thing. <laughs> He's an obstruction. To the real wisdom himself, he obstructed himself. He cracked himself up, <laughs> you can say that. So, what do you mean you are the crack in the emptiness? I mean, are you lousy? <laughs> you're really not just nothing, but you're really an obstruction, a, a, a damaging thing, yeah, to your own wisdom. Because wisdom is emptiness, you know, like that. When you're free of everything, you have no more conception of the thing that you think you knew before. Uh, you, you're really free. You really truly know freedom and you truly know what wisdom is and you truly know what it is about. Yeah? You truly know God. Yeah. And this guy he only learned it from somebody. Put in his pocket like card and get out one at a time, A B C and answer according to A B C. Like a dictionary. Empty, empty empty uh, head. And even dare to show off in front of the master, you know, thinking if he answered like that, the master would think, wow, he's somebody. <laughs> of course he would get mad, yeah? How dare he go there and wasting his tea and his time. <laughs> he probably break up the tray <laughs> so he don't come back again and, and heap on the food on the tray. <laughs> now you understood, yeah? You're not that empty, are you? <laughs> you understood, right? Yes. yes. This is the thing, you know? True knowledge is not by learning uh, from words, but has to be realized, you know, by yourself. You know, like sometimes you meditate or sometimes you encounter something and you suddenly have a glimpse of the truth behind it. It may have nothing to do with that thing. You just understood the truth, the reality of life, yeah? The true emptiness, yeah, a glimpse of it at least. And then you go on going, maybe tomorrow you forget already, you want to get it back, <laughs> it's not there anymore. Just one of the realization. And you have to move to the next. You cannot keep holding on to that uh, thing that you know yesterday. Yeah, it's like you walk in on the street, miles after miles, you have to keep going. You cannot go in back, look at the yesterday mileage, no? Oh, for example, like that. Oh my God, this guy. There are a lot of people like this. The poor tailor get beaten up <laughs> because he show up in front of a temperamental Zen master. <laughs> but there are many like that outside deserve more beating up than this. <laughs> I hope they don't come here <laughs> because uh, I don't have a Zen stick. They would not know what to do. <laughs> if you have a stick, you can work it out, you know. <laughs> Without your anger, if you don't have a stick, what you do? You throw candies at him? <laughs> that will also ease my anger. They come wasting your time, wasting your energy, yeah? And just want to show off. I mean, uh, if he thinks he knows a lot, why does he have to go to the Zen master and show off, right? If he knows already something, he keep it. The things we know, we don't go and show off, right? Like uh, Lao Tzu always say that the one who really knows doesn't show it. It looks like he's very dull, very dim, you know? Yeah. And the one who doesn't know uh, boasts a lot and loud mouth and all that, yes. Okay. <laughs> so so this master who, who was supposed to be big mouth, he told him the truth. I wonder if he really understood anything. <laughs> ah, he understood, according to the book. The tailor, after listening to the explanation of Tao Zhou Zen Master, he suddenly woke up. Okay. So it took two Zen Masters to wake an idiot. <laughs> That's the conclusion. <laughs> two beautiful, wise, benevolent Zen Masters to wake him up. But if he didn't beat him up so hard, 
he wouldn't wake up so early. Yes. That is the Zen stuff. You need beaten up. <laughs> Here, you use a train, that's enough. <laughs> or the cup. <laughs> Zen stuff like that, they make you work, okay? It's also uh, one way to awaken yourself. Yeah? It's just that you have to work harder like that. Yeah? And then you can only glimpse partial truth is not the whole thing yet, you see? He woke up then, but then he forget tomorrow again. Just like every day you meditate, you have a lot of experience, but then you forget and then you make another experience and you go to the next experience, yeah. That's the way it should be, yeah. When somebody wake up in the Zen practice, doesn't mean he uh, completely enlightened or that he will keep that forever. Sometimes he can have it, but then tomorrow he will lose it, okay? Right. So, but at least he understood the explanation. My God, need explanation. But it's not about the explanation that he understood. It's the way the Zen master told him. And also this Zen master has the power. So his word carries the power to wake that person up. It's not the words, it's the power behind it. Yeah, Most of the enlightened master, when they talk to you or when they met you, they give you a blessing, yeah? uh, invisible. You don't see it, nobody sees it. But his power is behind his word. It's not his word. His word may be bless you 30%, but the power behind it is 70%. Yeah? And that's why this guy woke up. Huh? If anybody tell him the same thing, learns it from anybody else, he probably never wake up. He go back to sleep. <laughs> and also, the first Zen master, he used his energy and power to beat him up. He might look angry, but he's not truly angry. He wants to act like that, so that break this guy out of his stupidity, out of his arrogance, out of his wrong conception about things. But it take another Zen master <laughs> to help him piece it together. Oh, what a hard guy. Oh, God. <laughs> You know why? Why it was so hard like that? Because he know too much. A tailor, he stuffed himself with too much garbage. That's why it took two Zen masters to empty it out. <laughs> That's why it took so long. Mm. But the first Zen master beat him up, not necessarily for no reason. Yeah? When he beat him up, he also uh, imparted to him his power as well, just like when other masters speak, you see? So he say, uh, when you meet another Zen master who is loud mouth, he will explain to you. <laughs> so different Zen masters have different methods. He doesn't want to talk, so he beat him up. This is his method of awakening the guy. Oh, this he will never forget. <laughs> to be beaten up like that for no reason, according to him, is wrongly accused and wrongly beaten up so he would never forget, you see? So day and night, night and day, every minute of his thinking hour, he will remember this and work on it. Do you understand me? Why? 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 <laughs> yeah, this is one of the koan too. What? 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 <laughs> or who? Who? You know, like who am I? But then they're too lazy, they say, who, 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 <laughs> Keeps asking who, 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 and then one day they will get the answer. Okay. Similarly, this master, he's a man of little words, he hates talking. That's why when this guy talked to him, you know, ping-pong like that, he hated it, so he beat him up. And this is his method to enlighten this guy. <laughs> this is a kind of koan for that uh, tailor, yeah? So that he go home, keep thinking about it all the time. It's just like another master gives you always a koan so that you have to go home and work on it. Uh, explain it to yourself and try to understand the question. And when you're trying to understand the question, I mean you are concentrating on one problem, so you forget all the problem. Right, that's how concentration works. And concentration gives you enlightenment. But this case, very long. Not like sit and, oh, I see the light. Yeah. Okay, seeing the light the first time doesn't mean you're completely enlightened, but at least you open like that. And then you can work slowly later on, every day, hmm? a little bit more. So this guy beat him up because that is his method. Instead of koan, he gave him 
a non-verbal koan. Yeah? <laughs> and when he met the other Zen master, who used, you know, a different approach to awaken him. So two of them together, 50-50, uh, the guy got it, <laughs> finally. Yeah. So you think poor tailor? Hmm? Poor master. Mm. <laughs> Such a hard case and still have to work on it. Some Zen master are not very patient. Or oh, they are sane, but are impatient sane. Yeah, okay? Some Zen master like this guy, he didn't like talking too much. And if you show off with him, he appalled. It's kind of intellectual malady. Mm? Like a mental sickness, you know, Zen sickness, just knowing the world but understand nothing and try to go around, show off to everybody. This is sickening. So he hated that type. So he used his strong method to make this guy never forget him <laughs> and never forget to work on why. You see? It's very uh, hard to awaken some, some people. So this master beat him up severely like that. So this tailor will never forget him. And as soon as he doesn't forget, he doesn't forget the master. He will always get connection with the master, and then there is a what? Power transference. That's what it is. Blessing him day by day, day by day, in such a tragic way. <laughs> <laughs> How else you can crack this kind of emptiness? Huh? I have to crack him up first, in order so this is empty everything else. And he can only concentrate now on why he beats me. That's it. Just one problem. It is still a problem, but it's still better than he have hundred thousand of other problems. <laughs> Too crowded. So the master had to use this method. To this type of guy, I'm sure he doesn't use the same type of method to everybody else. Just this guy. I would do the same, but I hope he doesn't come because... <laughs> I hope that guy doesn't come because I don't really like it. <laughs> so, uh, Taylor, after he was enlightened, what do you think he would feel about the first Zen master? Huh? Grateful. Grateful, correct, correct, correct. But it takes a long time, eh? Mm. You see, he has beaten this guy up. So this guy will remember him for so long, so long, so long. And as long as he remember, the master keep giving him his energy, his wisdom, his enlightenment. You know, one dose at the time. As soon as he empty one of his problem, one of his uh, clutching attachment, he will impart to him a portion of wisdom in that empty spot of his brain, of his mind. And as he continue to thinking of that Zen master, another problem will fall away, and the Zen master will replace that problem with the blessing in that empty compartment of him and continue like this day after day until he almost completely no other problem except this Zen master why he beat me up. <laughs> okay, and then at that time he almost empty already. Yeah, and when he came to the second master, then he's almost done. You see, the work has almost been done. So the Zen master just do like this, he is awakened. He needs just a little push, a last one. Like people play golf, oh, sometimes they hit the ball long, long, long way, eh? and then they go very near to the goal, yeah, the hole. And when he, he goes next to the hole, the golfer very lightly just pat the ball and then he goes into the hole right away. You see? Very near already. And you see men like that. Mm. So it's not because the second Zen master has the uh, power to awaken this guy as perceived, but because the first master has already been working on him invisibly. Even if he thinks of the master in such an unpleasant way, you know, still he thinks of the master, you see? <laughs> he will never forget this incident, never. And as long as he don't forget the incident, he will not forget the master. And that's how the connection Continue, continue, continue. Huh? Would you ever forget somebody who beat you up like that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Until you die, you won't. <laughs> so the connection, completely perfect, going on all the time. Uh, during his waking, sleeping hours, a dreaming hour, even he dreamed that he's beating him up also in his dream. <laughs> 
And then, because of that, he stopped the wrestling of his mind. The daily, you know, busy with all kind of nonsensical question. Yeah. So at least he doesn't ask any new question. Yeah, because he's too busy with this question. Why did he beat me up? For God's sake, <laughs> I haven't done anything wrong. See, so he keeps thinking of that all the time, and every other problem fall away, keep falling, falling one after another, and then he became more empty. And the master power is there for him. So when the second master just flick his finger like this, then he's all done, everything gone. That's how he became enlightened. Wonderful story. Thank you so much. <laughs> Books are not that bad. You just have to know what book, <laughs> and you have to understood the book. Yeah, the story sometimes remind us of our <laughs> lousy self, <laughs> and then we can be enlightened somewhat. Hmm? Okay. Capish? Got it. Everybody? Yeah. Any question? Yes. Any question concerning this? Are you all happy and understood? Understood, huh? Yes. Happy? Yes. Cool. All right. So what time is it now? Good time. <laughs> oh, look at this watch that they give me. That's why I was late sometime, 15.54. <laughs> Telling you. Yeah. The day before, the same, I have an appointment for a radio interview, and my watch is uh, one hour uh, later. <laughs> you know, like it's supposed to be 12 o'clock, and it's only 11. Yeah, one hour late. Late, yeah. So I was thinking I have another two hours' time, you know. <laughs> I take my time, and <laughs> I do my stuff or not doing my stuff. And then suddenly, last minute, go, Master, you know, you have half an hour. <laughs> Ooh, okay, I run. <laughs> I run and make myself ready. Yeah. It's sometimes very <laughs> difficult with so many people working. Sometimes they don't remind me on time. Yeah, sometimes my clock is cheating me. You know, they all giving me a hard time, even the clock. Even the, you know, quiet clock, they give me a hard time too. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, you want anything else? You want to meditate? What mean, yeah? <laughs> What else can I give you? You meditate, no? Huh? <sighs> what love? What did you say? You want to see you more. See me more? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. See you more. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? Sit here all forever? <laughs> One more story. Candy. Candy? <laughs> okay. Who wants one more story? Raise hand. See if majority or not. <laughs> Is that majority? Yes. Is it? Is it count it? That, that's almost all of us. Almost all of you? The Chinese, they don't understand. They didn't know right there. Wait, I'm patient. I don't see any hand rising there. Oh. Uh, three, oh, four? There <laughs> Five? <laughs> and whoever don't raise hand, what are they? Okay, once more again. Story, raise hand. Oh, now everybody just raise hand. <laughs> I don't even understand anything. Just like, <laughs> I learned it already. Just like this guy, you know? <laughs> okay, maybe I come back then, huh? You guys uh, have a break, yeah? Because you've been sick in all day. You get up, do some exercise a little bit, and go to the bathroom or something, and come back, same position, okay? Yes, Master. And maybe I can. <laughs> I said maybe. <laughs> Are you supposed to sit here meditating? It's always hope. Yeah? Okay. I'll wait for Steve. Okay. <laughs> Please. Uh huh? Bring your stick. Bring your stick. Bring your stick. <laughs> I go so the they can look at me and look at me. Okay. Yeah, it's time to come to the
可以来了<笑> 可以吗可以你就加了可以来<笑><笑> 用那个毛宝宝教自己的那个脸给他知道我是谁睡觉太厉害了睡成这个样子忽然我回来也许也许也许<笑><笑> Chinese, 好,謝謝很久。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。謝謝。